At the outset, I am very much thankful to organizing team of Diabetes India, particularly Dr. Bansi Sabu, for inviting me to share my views about this topic, exercise the best insulin sensitizer. And this is the flow chart of my talk. We all know that exercise is one of the therapeutic options for improving insulin resistance, which is the core defect in patients who are having type 2 diabetes. Recent trials, they have proven the beneficial effects of exercise on improving insulin sensitivity and role of exercise in the management of diabetes. Landmark trials like Diabetes Prevention Program, they have also proven the role of exercise in prevention of diabetes in patients who are aware at high risk of diabetes. Although we still don't know the exact mechanisms by which exercise it improves insulin sensitivity in muscle, considerable progress has been made into this field and I will share some of this progress. So how exercise affects insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity? Whenever there is a muscle contraction, it will result in activation of a number of signaling molecules, MPK, ROSE, nitrous oxide, bradykinin, calcium and newer molecules and all this together they will result in translocation of GLUT4 to the surface and that will result in increased glucose uptake and this mechanism is independent of insulin. In the absence of insulin, muscle contraction, it increases glucose uptake. And this acute effect is followed by an increase in insulin sensitivity which was first reported in 1992 by Rudermann's group and this post-exercise increase in insulin sensitivity may last up to 48 hours. And there are various mechanisms like the contraction hypoxia pathway, translocation of more GLUT4 to the surface, involvement of serum and all these things they contribute to this post-exercise increase in insulin sensitivity. A single bout of exercise will increase glucose uptake by at least 40% and this may last up to 48 hours as I have already discussed. Now the exact impact of exercise training that is repeated muscle contractions on glucose metabolism is still not very clear. The issue is not there whether exercise training is associated with beneficial effects on insulin sensitivity and insulin action but the controversy at present is that whether these effects they are direct effects or they are mediated via decrease in body fat or body weight. However, at present it is reasonable to suggest that the beneficial effects of exercise on insulin action, they will be magnified if they are associated with decrease in body weight or body fat percentage. Exercise training, it improves skeletal muscle glucose uptakes through various mechanisms. These are some, this is the graph showing various mechanisms, some of which are upregulation of GLUT4 expression and the facilitation of insulin signal transduction, chronic activation of MPK and promoting mitochondrial biogenesis, thereby increasing lipid oxidation and preventing the accumulation of deleterious lipid species which contribute to insulin insensitivity. So this was about how exercise affects insulin resistance. Now what are the effects of different types and intensities of exercise on insulin sensitivity, glycemic control and other parameters. This is the data from the diabetes prevention program where this one is the placebo group, this is the group which has received metformin, this is exercise group and this is combined group. If you see the exercise improves insulin sensitivity more than metformin alone. And when you combine both two, then metformin, these effects, they are not summed up. Metformin blunts the beneficial effects of exercise on the insulin sensitivity. So this data clearly shows that exercise is much better than metformin in improving insulin sensitivity in individuals with pre-diabetes who are having high insulin resistance. What about glycemic control? The first study randomized trial, 250 type 2 diabetic patients, they were subjected to three types of exercise, either aerobic, either resistance or combined exercise program. And if you see the combined exercise program was associated with much more reduction in A1C as compared to the single exercise program alone. However, if you see the total time which was spent in the exercise, the duration of exercise was more 
when they were subjected to combined exercise program as compared to they were subjected to single exercise program. The same way replicated in Iranian study, 80 type 2 diabetic patients published just in 2012, <laughs> where aerobic was associated with reduction in A1C by 1.33. Resistance was associated with 0.55 and if you combine both two, there is summation of this effect and 1.74% reduction in HbA1c was seen. A meta-analysis by Bole confirmed that exercise reduces A1c to the tune of 0.66%. The same is replicated in another meta-analysis where the A1c reduction was to the tune of 0.8% whether you take aerobic resistance or combined and the, generally the differences between these exercises were very small only 0.18 percent so they concluded that all forms of exercise training they produce small benefit in main measure of glucose control A1C that is to the tune of 0.7 to 0.8 percent and this another meta-analysis has finally confirmed and concluded that using one or the other type of exercise for type 2 diabetes may be less important than doing some form of physical activity. So rather than wasting time in which kind of exercise is beneficial for your patient, increasing physical activity either by aerobic or by resistance training means or by combined training means definitely going to improve the glycemic control. What about type 1 diabetes? If you see the upper bar is non-exercise, the patients who were not subjected to exercise. This is the aerobic exercise and this is resistance exercise. If you see the aerobic exercise, initially there is a good glucose lowering, but post-exercise the glucose rises up. In opposite to this, resistance exercise not associated with immediate glucose lowering, but after exercise there is prolonged reduction of glucose and this is the reason why resistance training is associated with much more reduction in HbA1c in type 1 diabetic patients. Now apart from effects on glycemic control, exercise is also associated with beneficial effects on adipose tissue. In this study exercise without weight loss if you see reduce uh, abdominal subcutaneous adipose tissue and visceral adipose tissue both in obese individuals who were without diabetes and obese individuals with type 2 diabetes. So even when there is no weight loss, it definitely decreases the body fat, particularly the visceral adipose tissue. And the last thing, the LUCAEG trial data, it has clearly demonstrated that the intensive lifestyle intervention which involves structured exercise program is associated with reduction in total course, medication course, hospitalization course. So exercise not only improves glycemic control and insulin sensitivity but also it is cost effective on a longer run as this trial was lasted over a period of 10 years. What about children and youth? This was the meta-analysis where exercise and insulin resistance in youth which was published in pediatrics and concluded that the exercise training has got a beneficial effect on fasting insulin levels and insulin resistance and should be recommended as for the prevention and treatment of type 2 diabetes in the youth. So this I have discussed about the beneficial effects of exercise on insulin sensitivity, glycemic control and other parameters. What are the recommendations for exercise? These are the two set of recommendations. These are ADA recommendations and these are Canadian guidelines. Both are almost same but these are more practical. ADA recommends that children should spend at least 60 minutes of physical activity each day and adults should perform at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity targeting 50 to 70 percent of maximum heart rate and this should be spread over a week at least three days per week because as we say the each episode of exercise the effect on insulin sensitivity will last maximum for 48 hours so there should be no more than two consecutive days without exercise if you want to have a continuous prolonged effects of exercise on insulin sensitivity also they say that you have to reduce your sedentary time particularly by breaking up extended amounts of time spent sitting 
and in the absence of contraindications, resistant training should be done at least twice weekly by type 2 diabetic patients. What Canadian guidelines say that increase physical activity and reduce sedentary time, limit sedentary recreational time which is spent on TV, computer and laptops to not more than two hours per day. Begin regular aerobic exercise initially four days per week, each session lasting 10 minutes and begin resistance exercise two days per week. And over a period of months, you increase the regular aerobic exercise to five days per week and each session consisting of at least 30 minutes and increase re resistance exercise to at least three days or more days per week. So these are the recommendations by ADA and Canadian guidelines for exercise for type 2 diabetic patients. We all are worried about cardiac events when we subject our patients to moderate or vigorous intensity exercise. We are worried that whether they will experience cardiac event or not. We are worried whether we have to subject these patients to exercise uh, stress testing or not. This was a scientific statement by the American Heart Association published in circulation in 2009 that exercise training for type 2 diabetes where stress testing is recommended only if the patient is having history of CAD, if the patient is having clinical or laboratory evidence of peripheral arterial disease or cerebrovascular disease, patient is already having symptoms of chest pain or dyspnea, and if the ECG evidence is there of infarction or ischemia, and if you are subjecting a patient to a vigorous intensity exercise program, then in the absence of anything, you have to advise him to undergo exercise training to find out his threshold and whether he is having underlying cardiac disease or not. So to summarize, I will say exercise is one of the therapeutic options for improving insulin resistance. A growing body of literature indicates that exercise with or without weight loss improves insulin sensitivity and it is reasonable to suggest that when exercise is associated with decrease in body fat or body weight, then this beneficial effects will be magnified. Apart from glycemic benefits, modest exercise also reduces the morbidity and mortality which is associated with cardiovascular disease and diabetes and it should be considered one effective therapeutic strategy not only for reducing insulin resistance but also for improving overall health and well-being and you should not waste time in deciding which kind of exercise you should do. You should tell your patients to increase their physical activity and reduce their uh, sedentary Thank you very much.